in terms of how you see the U.S. economy right now, how binary is this? How different are the outcomes if we get it, if we don't get it? So I think the different outcomes are basically on how long it takes us to uh, recover from not just COVID, we can set COVID aside, but from the lingering impacts of long-term unemployment, because we are still at an unemployment rate in the U.S. It's just under 8%. And while that feels very good compared to where we were during lockdown, um, taken alone, that's a very high rate of unemployment and typically not a time that you would want to uh, mess around with taking fiscal support uh, away. All right, Stephen Stanley of Amherst, uh, Pierpont, was on earlier on Bloomberg Television. He said that the U.S. recovery would continue, could continue, even without fiscal support. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. And that's in our numbers, too. We've got a sharp slowdown in growth in the fourth quarter. There's no getting away from that. We have mechanically stripped out uh, uh, an incredible amount of income uh, from household pocketbooks with the expiration of the benefits back at the end of July. But it's positive, right? Positive growth. It's a sharp slowdown. We're going to have to digest that, uh, but it is still positive. And so I think our main message that I've been sending is that, you know, this is a hit that we're going to take, but it's not economic Armageddon if we don't get further stimulus. Our public policy strategists pulled their expectation for further stimulus some time ago and said, we are getting nothing before the election. So that's not been in our numbers. We took that out. And we took down fourth quarter growth quite sharply. But I think the, the work that we've done on the amount of excess savings that we have in the economy that households have been pulling from provides an incredible float. I mean, how is it that these benefits expired at the end of July and consumer confidence increased in August, increased in September, and I mean increased across all income groups, and spending increased in August, and our preliminary data suggests that spending increased further in September. How is that? Because the first CARES package was so large with, with such long tails in terms of how much income we gave households that they have not spent yet, that allows them to float for a time after the expiration of these benefits. Uh, so yes, it's not an economic Armageddon, but we are gonna have to digest a, a slowdown without, without that further fiscal support. What does the beginning of next year look like? Uh, the, the betting odds at the moment point to a big Biden win and a potential blue wave that follows it. The expectation on the back of that is that we would see significant stimulus delivered from the White House, delivered from Congress next year. If that was to come relatively quickly, how fast does the data pivot, though, on the upside? Well, I think certainly, you know, the, the markets will pivot quickly on the upside, and that does end up flowing through into some of the data. Uh, but the, you know, you've got, you've still got COVID as a backdrop, right? So we're still going to be going through the winter. We're still not going to be at a point then coming into the new year where we are broadly disseminating a vaccine to folks and people have to get vaccinated several times. States are probably going to be looking at that as a guide to opening up. Uh, post-vaccine, but people will feel better, right? They'll feel better. You'll see consumer confidence increasing. And to the extent that they can continue to go out and engage in economic activity in a way that makes them feel safe uh, and stay healthy, then they'll, they'll do that. So I think it does bleed through into the economy before we even get uh, uh, actual dollars in place from the stimulus. And in a sense, you know, we've reflected that in our outlook where we have growth inflecting, but we don't wait for a full dissemination of the vaccine. To some extent, this is about households and, and the self-policing that they're doing and how comfor comfortable they feel. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of stimulus that's going to be COVID-related. Um, we've uncovered a lot of inequities around COVID to add to the income inequality that we never addressed post uh, the financial crisis. So there's going to be a lot of COVID-related legislation. And then the types of policies, just looking at it objectively from an economist's lens, uh, in a democratic sweep, the types of stimulus you get from Democrats is demand side stimulus. And so they're going to be raising taxes. Taxes are going to go up, full stop. But the amount of spending they do and the, and the multiplier effect from uh, uh, cutting taxes uh, and, and boosting those lower income uh, households with higher marginal propensity to consume, a favorite term of economists, 
Um, that gives you a pretty big bang for your buck from democratic stimulus policies. Uh, and, and that's what we're in store for uh, if we get a blue sweep. So there's, a, there's sort of this, this needle uh, that economists are threading right now, where they're basically saying, yes, the economic data isn't so bad. We are recovering. We will continue to recover even without fiscal support. Yet without fiscal support, there will be deep and permanent scarring that will take a very long time to undo. And that has to do with the labor market. What kind of unemployment rate are we looking at, let's say, over the next six months with and without an additional round of fiscal support? Yeah, so the drop in the unemployment rate that we're seeing is going to slow quite a bit. Um, so I don't think it's going to move that much from where it is here. I mean, we've seen in this latest jobs report that we've had uh, uh, people uh, two, two straight months, the biggest uh, two straight months in quite some time of people that permanently left the labor market. Um, some of that is, is COVID-related. Other parts of that is, is just typical in a, in a severe downturn uh, that we, if, we, if we crawl slowly out of it. Um, the amount of permanent job loss can be affected greatly or offset greatly by further fiscal stimulus. So you're just looking at a much slower slog in the unemployment rate coming down um, uh, without fiscal stimulus versus what it would be if we had gotten fiscal stimulus. Now, now further fiscal stimulus is not the salve for everything. I mean, COVID still is the overarching uh, factor um, in this recovery. Uh, and we will get permanent job loss from it. I think when we look at our unemployment rate forecast, even two years from now, we're still a few percentage points above where we were pre-COVID, which does reflect an expectation of some amount of permanent job loss. Um, so again, it's not a solve for everything, but the academic studies pretty solidly show that the, the, when you crawl out of these deep downturns, the slower you do it, the more, as you put it, permanent scarring there is to the economy. So I don't think this is something that we should be playing around with. 